Hello everyone. Now last week I saw something rather interesting on my news feed. It said new species of snake discovered in the UK. Well obviously that's going to be something that's going to catch my attention, isn't it? And it turns out it's true. There's a new species of snake in the UK. And since my most popular video on YouTube is me holding one of those snakes, the grass snake, then it's only right for me to delve into this a little bit further. So it turns out that the grass snake is now two different species. There's the common grass snake and the barred grass snake. Now when I filmed my grass snake video a year ago, that clearly wasn't the case. So I'm back in exactly the same location that I was last time to see what species it is and explain a little bit further about what it actually means. What does it actually mean that there's suddenly a new species in the UK? And how could have this passed us by for so many years? You might think it has a pretty good definition, the word species. The one that's more commonly used is something which is called the biological species concept. It makes sense that's the most used one because it's rele most relevant to biology. And that defines a species as just simply a group of interbreeding organisms. So organisms that can breed together to produce fertile offspring. Therefore, they're what we call reproductively isolated to all other organisms in an ecosystem. Right. Ah, here we go, here we go. Whoa! There we go. What an animal that is. So, this is the question on everybody's lips. Is this a common grass snake or the barred grass snake? And I've got to say, it's a bit of a disappointing answer because I can tell this is actually quite clearly a common grass snake. It's Natrix Natrix. How do I know that? Well, there's a few features that the scientists have found out that are characteristic of the common grass, of the barred grass snake rather than the common grass snake. The barred grass snake tends to be a lot, lot greyer in colour. Here on this specimen, we've got a classic olive green going on here, which is what you'd see in all the textbooks being a characteristic colour for a grass snake. Also, the barred grass snake, as the name suggests, has bars on it. If you look closely at the scales of this animal, you can see little black spots along the side of the animal, but no real stripes. The barred grass snake has much more distinctive stripes going along the body. Okay. And the second thing, one of the other characteristics of the grass snake, which we've always been told in the textbook to look out for, is the yellow collar. Now, the barred grass snake does have a yellow collar of sorts, but it's a lot less distinct and it's not complete. It's not a full circle. There's a gap on the top of the head where there's no collar at all. But if you look closely here, you can see a full yellow collar around the head there. So how was this only just discovered then? Well, before last week, the barred grass snake was called a different subspecies to the grass snake. Now, what does that mean? Now, subspecies is a word which is almost more difficult to define than species, really. A subspecies is a population of a species which is geographically isolated, usually, from all other populations of that species. So a subspecies could mate with another subspecies, but they can't, because they're geographically isolated, they can't physically do so. There's no public transport. You know, they can't just hop on a plane to see their mate on the other side of the valley. You know, they're, they're geographically isolated from each other. So you could say that subspecies are on their way to becoming species. Um, and to understand that, we need to talk about evolution, of course. That's how all these species came about in the first place. More specifically, speciation. That's how species are produced. I'm going to try and explain that now. What I want you to imagine is just to imagine a population of a species, and by species that means they can interbreed with each other. Each one of these individuals can happily interbreed with any other individual in that population. Now over evolutionary time, um, the environment changes somewhat. 
So much so that a geographical barrier forms, in this case a river, between the two populations. Now suppose then a mutation arises, a difference arises in one of the populations, let's say in this one. Now here you can see this individual is a lot smaller than the other individuals in that population, but that may be a good thing, it may be advantageous to be small, okay? Maybe somehow they can carve out a completely different niche by being small. So that gene for being small will start to spread in that population. Now, there's still clearly similarities here between this population and that population. This population is larger, but as you can see they're the same colour, aren't they? So, when we relate back to our grass snakes, then maybe we could um, describe this as being two different subspecies, okay? So, if we were to remove the river, these individuals could still probably interbreed with each other to produce fertile offspring, but they just physically can't, okay? So here we have two different subspecies. But, over time, the two populations will start to change even more. So, maybe a mutation arises for a different colour, for example. That different colour mutation may be advantageous. It'll spread throughout the population, okay? So now, over millions of years, most likely, we've got speciation. Speciation is complete. Okay, so how does this bring us to the grass snakes? Well, what the scientists did, they looked at a hybrid zone. Okay, so a hybrid zone is a very special place where the two species can interbreed. Okay, so let's remove the barrier. But, in this hybrid zone, which is in the Rhine region in Switzerland, hybrids do form, we're going to represent them using these coins here, but it's actually very, very narrow. It's a very, very narrow strip, okay? Most of the time, these two different species, the barred grass snake and the common grass snake, don't mix with each other. They don't interbreed very often. So, if you've got such a narrow band here, that suggests hybrids, in this case, will be selected against. That's the case between the common and the barred grass snake. Another thing that the scientists did is they looked at another hybrid zone between two different subspecies, okay? And here, the hybrid zone was a lot broader, so there was a lot more mixing in this hybrid zone. So, that suggests that when comparing the common and the barred grass snake, they're much, much further separated in evolutionary time. They're, the speciation process is at a, a much more advanced stage, so much so that we can call them two different species. And what makes this even more interesting is that it's actually quite rare for species to be discovered just like that these days. You know, us biologists like to think we know more or less how many species, especially large animals like this, you know, new bacteria, new insects and smaller animals are being found more frequently, but a large vertebrate like a grass snake, our largest species of snake, that really is quite something, I think. Okay, well he's been exceptionally well behaved, I think it's time to let him go back to his corrugated iron, hunting his frogs, toads and newts. Hello, <laughs> didn't see you there. Did you enjoy the video? Good. Well, if you did, you know what to do then, don't you? Subscribe! <laughs> what you need to do is press that button there. Just there. And if you want to see another video, just go over there. The world's your oyster.